Hello everyone, welcome to Friday Night Knits. My name is Becky. I'm coming to you from Midland, Texas, USA. Uh, it's Friday night, April 29th. <laughs> and this is episode two. So welcome, welcome. Uh, if this is your first time joining me, you haven't missed much, just one episode. Um, if you are coming back, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's so very awesome. Um, and yeah, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Becky Ray. That's B E C K Y R H A E. Um, and find me there. Friend me on Instagram and Ravelry. Friend me, follow me, all that social media stuff. So, um, I did not plan on filming today. I was going to do every two weeks, but uh, a couple of people seemed disappointed that I wasn't going to do weekly, and then I got to thinking about it, and I had fun last week, so I I decided to go ahead and film today. Uh, because of that, I didn't really knit a lot last week, thinking I had two weeks, so I'm not going to have a lot to show you current stuff, but I have some things to show you. So, um, it, it is a knitting podcast, but you won't really be able to tell, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully, I can keep it knitting enough that you'll realize that it's a knitting podcast. So, again, welcome. And, uh, let's see, first thing I want to say is thank you to people that supported last week, that, um, commented on my Instagram or just Facebook or I even had a couple of comments on YouTube. I have 33 subscribers on YouTube, which blows my mind. I don't even think any of those are family. So, hey. Hey. Um, so, let's talk about my first thank yous. And my first thank yous are um, going to be for uh, some Blythe people because... For me, knitting and Blythe kind of go hand in hand. I got pretty into into knitting uh, around 2006, 2007. I had been knitting before that, but not uh, not anything outside of like dishcloths and more dishcloths. So in 2006, 2007 is when I started toy knitting and. Um, when I would finish with something, you could tell that it was something. So it was pretty neat. And after getting on Ravelry in about 2007, Blythe dolls were almost immediate. I, I would see people's project pages or their avatars or something with these little dolls with big heads and big eyes. So I immediately sought them out, figured out what they were, um, and bought one. So, I started knitting Blythe stuff, and one of the people that was really supportive last week was my friend named Sherry. And Sherry and I have met in person a couple of times at, at Blythe conventions, and she's, she's also a knitter, and she knits people things, and she knits Blythe things, and so... Thanks, Sherry. Thank you so much for your support. I so appreciate it. And um, on that note, I'm going to show you a couple of Blythe things. <coughs> There's Homer again. Here she is. And um, Homer is wearing one of my famous sock beanies that Becky's going to knit a pair of socks for herself. No, she's not. <laughs> so I started this as a pair of socks, some self-striping yarn. It was really cool. I think I almost made it to the heel before I was like, why am I knitting socks? I don't want to knit socks. And I kind of threw it off to the side. It got stuck in a box and got tucked away in my craft room. And a couple years later, I found it. I probably needed the needles, which is why I was looking for it. And I thought, wow, I can just decrease the top of that. So I did. And it made a perfect hat for the Blythe dolls. So that's Homer's hat. 
She's also wearing a cute little dress made by my friend Kyle. I, sewing, something that tiny just blows me away. And then she's wearing a cute little striped cardigan by my friend Brian. So a lot of the people, a lot of people in the Blythe community are crafters, very, very talented crafters. So that's some hand knits on a Blythe doll. And then here's another Blythe doll. This is Itchy. She's a Kenner, so she's from 1972. She's a year younger than me. Looks good for her age, doesn't she? And she is wearing a sweet, sweet little dress made by Sherry that I mentioned earlier. Isn't that gorgeous? What is that stuck to it? A little piece of paper. So, really lacy, delicate in the skirt part. Uh, I think this is some kind of, you know, kid's silk, maybe, or... But it's so soft and fluffy, and she makes... These, a lot of the times her dresses have a little pom-pom right about here and it, it, they are the most perfect, round, colorful, fluffy, fluffy, fluffy little pom-poms. So this is one of Sherry's dresses. So yeah, Blythe and knitting, it, it very much goes hand in hand. So thank you to Sherry again for all your support. Oh, let me show you another thing people do with Blythe dolls. I have this friend named JJ. His, he's Dr. Blydstein, and he uses yarn for hair on his custom dolls. And this is one of his yarn heads, and she's a petite, so she's super tiny. And she's wearing this super tiny dress I knit for her. That's on um, Madeline Tosh, uh, Tosh Light. And yeah, her, so I, I'm not exactly sure how he does it. Uh, I think he, he drills holes. In there but I'm not sure how he gets the yarn all in there and things but a little pom-pom head I want pom-pom head hair I think she's precious hi hi so yeah so Blythe and and yarn it's it's a thing and it's fun um so like I said I wasn't really planning on on filming this week so works in progress I I didn't really that much knitting. I'm off this weekend, so I had planned on really buckling down and knitting this weekend and, and being that way. I Instead of knitting this past week, I did a bunch of house cleaning on Ravelry. I had emptied my stash, deleted my stash about two months ago. And then, so earlier this week, I was taking pictures of, I started with fingering and, and sock weight yarn and was putting that back in my stash. Because most of what was in there before was from 2007 when I first joined and I wasn't using my stash the way it was meant to be used. I was just putting pictures of yarn in there and when I was doing projects, even if I was using the stash yarn, I wasn't saying that I was using it. So that's what I did instead of knit this week. But I did do want to show a couple of things to you. I have a hoe now because I did... Kitchener up the toe of my Hermione's everyday sock so here it is again and that's on the the trekking XXL yarn and the toes and heel and this royal Osterman royal so here's my Kitchener I'm pretty impressed with my Kitchener I did the uh earless Kitchener where you don't really do the setup part of it so you just go straight into it and it does seem to be a little better on that toe but it I think it could still be even better but uh, these will not be done in time for Katie's knit along the uh, Harry Potter knit along that was okay and then I was thinking well my daughter's coming for Mother's Day weekend and that's I told her I'd give her these so I was like oh well that'll give me plenty of time till the end of you know sometime around the end of May and then my husband asked me tonight after dinner he said is Mother's Day next weekend I was like oh no it can't be and then I looked at my calendar and, uh, it's next week <laughs> so these probably won't even be done when she's here but I know they fit so maybe I'll, I'll work on them next week so that's kind of my languishing whip and then 
because I I can't not start projects. I started a project today or yesterday. I am going to do one more, try to get one more Steffi along done for the Legacy Knits Steffi along. It ends on Sunday and I already have two in um, the fox and the reindeer, but this little fox right here and then a reindeer that I've already given to my friend. But this, uh, I'm gonna make an armadillo. And I'm using a, a free pattern I found on Ravelry. And it's got this seed stitch moss, well they call it moss stitch, but I think this is actually just seed stitch. Um, and then some knit pearl, pearl, knit ridges. So this is the front part of his shell and the bands. There should be nine of them. I haven't double checked their pattern, but there should be nine of them because nine banded armadillos. And then uh, I should be able to finish the, the shell tonight. I've already done all four legs. And so head and tail and the bottom of the shell this weekend and then stuff it up. So hopefully I will have three entered into Legacy Knits stuff you love. Um, I don't have any FOs, um, so I'm going to show you an old FO. This is the Skipping Dots shawl, and it's a very long, thin, it, it's a slight circular, sh I mean, it, it's it's not triangular in shape. It's got a, a very fluid curve to it. And it's, it was done with Madeline Tosh Light in the Pop Rocks and Antler. And then this color here that's multicolored was um it's called the Richard DeVries yarn company I think he's out of Canada I think and it's the colorway was called carnival and here's actually some that's what I have left of it and I think that would make a really cute blithe sweater so that's an old FO. And one of the things I've decided this year is um, I have some languishing <laughs> whips that have been languishing forever. And I really want to get them finished. And the biggest one of all is I was doing a sweater by I think the I think the pattern was written by Knit Diva. And I know I have it somewhere on a printed out. I bought it at my local yarn store. But it's a sweater I was making for my daughter. So I've, it, it was start at the top, you know, you do the raglan increases. And then I did this waistline lacy detail with this beaded yarn. And then it flared out a little and has the bottom done and on the sleeves you knit down a ways and then there's a band of this lace in the sleeves and then it bells out for to the ends to the wrists and to finish it I will actually have to frog it first because I started it when she was in junior high and now she is 25 and you know, she's a girl, she's just got a little more going on up here than she did when she was in junior high. So I'm going to have to redo it to fit her, but I, I have all the yarn and I, when I first bought it, it, it was probably the biggest purchase of yarn I made that year, maybe two or three years in that time frame. So the beaded yarn is Tilly Thomas. So it, it, it seems ridiculous to let it sit in a box and languish. So I, I want to finish that this year. I want to frog it and re-knit it. And I did locate the 
pattern the other day when I was organizing my craft room, so I know I still have that. And even if I didn't, I know I've seen it on Ravelry, and I could buy it again. So that's that's my my whips, my hoes, my foes. Not too much. Um, I was talking about cows earlier, and I was saying that that I I won't finish my Hermione's everyday socks in time for KT's inside number twenty four Harry Potter knit along. Um, and I won't finish my three colored cashmere shawl in time for the grocery girls three colored cashmere shawl knit along, but I will finish both of those. Um, I, I think that's the cool thing about knit alongs. I don't always finish them in the time frame, but I love knitting something with a lot of people. Um, when that that's the biggest appeal of knit alongs is is like projects with people and I've done back when I first started knitting and would hang out at my local yarn store with the first group of ladies that I knit with they were all much older than me and we we did knit alongs all the time they would we would have we had a guild and we would sit at guild night and we would discuss something that we all wanted to learn and we would all pick something we'd vote and then the next month that's something we would we would learn so I tried a tiny bit of fair isle with them because a lot of them made big sweaters but there was no way I was going to knit <clears throat> a fair isle sweater living in West Texas because I knew I would never get I'd never wear it and I learned beaded knitting with them I knit a a beaded a shawl that I gave to my grand, one of my, to my stepdad's mother one year. I knit, let's see, we did color work, we did beads. I learned the Mobius knitting with them. I ended up teaching a lot of them how to do the, the Cat Bordies Mobius knitting. We learned felted purses, felted clogs. So I really enjoy, um, the community knit alongs where it's more than one person doing it it's really nice to have somebody to ask questions to and that kind of thing so I love cows I'm just not very good at finishing on my time frame so I I want to get in another cow this summer and I think I was I think I heard that when I was watching a homespun house the other day that Molly is considering a spring summer Stella Stellina along and that gives me an excuse to use my woolen vine for and I think she said she doesn't want it to be socks so she wants it something pretty and shiny around your face so I want to find a really neat something to knit for that I guess I need to join her group on Ravelry and figure it all out so um, that's that's something I want to do. Um, and I think that's it about for cows. Um, I've done a few mystery cows. I did Color Cravings and Doodler with Stephen West. And I think I've done another one that I never even completed because once I started seeing the clues coming out and the... And and the pictures of people's projects, they, they it kind of freaked me out, so I didn't finish it. But I, I think I prefer cows of a project I've already seen the end result of. <clears throat> but let's talk now about what I'm wearing. This is a crochet top that my granny made for my mother. I think... I think she made it about 32 or 34 years ago and it's just a little crochet tunic um, and I got one as well and I still have it I found these I was at my mother's going through my old closet at her house and I found these in the closet and so this is the this one was mine it was lavender and it's cotton and so they're wearable in West Texas. And it, 
I was so excited when I found it because my, my granny was, was a sewer, a seamstress. She sewed professionally. She, there was a restaurant in Odessa where I grew up that had the cocktail, the waitresses wore little bitty cocktail dresses with lots of petticoats and it was black. And I, I remember them being black and red and have having red Rick Rack tape along the edges. And so I remember them being very cute, but so she sewed those, she made blankets, she made quilts. Um, she would She would make me any piece of clothing I ever asked her for. And so I have a lot of things that she sewed, but I know she crocheted and I don't have a lot of her crochet because what she usually did was she made um, at Christmas time several years in a row, I remember her making angels with the little bodies and then the skirts were, were real lacy crochet and the wings were like the, the pineapple pattern that's it's kind of a teardrop paisley shape for wings and I remember helping her with those I usually did like the body parts because the head the just circle head and the body and the arms were really easy for me to do and then she did all the complicated lace stuff and then we would we'd block them the skirts we'd block over um, candle votives that belled out and the wings we would block on on the tables with the wax paper laying on wax paper and then anything else I remember her making were table runners. And one time she did um, some lace curtains um, to hang in my cousin's house because she had those, the, the door, and then she had these small, long windows beside her door and she couldn't find anything to make it a little more private. So my granny made her those beautiful lace curtains and that's all I remember crochet wise. I don't remember her ever making blankets or afghans or anything like that. So I don't have any of that. And to get these tunics just makes me stupid happy. I can actually still fit in the purple one as well. But once I'm in it, I can't move. <laughs> but um, it's they're, they're precious to me. And my daughter has has worn them a time or two and she knows how important they are to me so she always brings them back and but she gets it too so um well that made me just a little bit teary sorry about that um let's see out, outside of that not a lot going on with me I, I have joined a couple of swaps um and it's mini skein swaps that I've been getting into uh, because mini skeins to me have always meant um, yarn for Blythe dolls. So um, I, I've, I've been trading for people for Blythe dolls and uh, to do clothes for the dolls. But I have started looking at the uh, Cozy Memories blankets. I, I got the, the pattern from Kemper and the other night I, I knit up a couple of squares I didn't attach them to each other yet. I was just looking if I liked the way she has it all set up and if I liked my edges and stuff. And sure enough, I didn't like my edges. I don't, nah. So I had seen where KT from inside number 23 had changed up. She gave us her modified pattern on one of her podcasts not long ago. And so I tried hers with the double decrease down the middle and then on the back side of the work doing the pearl on that center stitch. And that was nicer. I kind of, I like that a lot. My beginning still looked wonky on a couple of the squares I did, but I, that may have just been because I wasn't really paying that close of attention. So my edges still look very untidy. So I think that's where I need to figure out what to do. If I don't like my edges, I won't do much with the blankets. So I'm, I'm still on the fence a little bit about whether I'm going to do a memory blanket or not, but I am participating in a couple of swaps. And I'll show you why I'm a little bit leery of memory blankets. 
remember the hexy puffs. <laughs> I know you all do. Those hexy puffs. Oh, my hexy puff. Like crazy, some crazy plastic yarn hexy puffs. Um, this one is one of my favorites. Um, go, Pat, go. Uh, I even have a, oh, here it is. A ladybug hexy puff. And I believe in the bottom down here, maybe even some flat ones or not. But I, I, I obviously didn't get very far. I certainly don't have a hexy puff, puff blanket. I may have a hexy puff. Ooh, I don't even think I have a seat cushion amount. The Blythe dolls may get a blanket. But, you know, it doesn't take much to cover the Blythe dolls. So that's why I'm a little why I'm a little bit leery on memory blankets. The idea, everything about it appeals to me. I used to do like modular origami. And that took a bunch of pieces of the same shape to make something big, like a globe shape, round shape, was all these little star shaped things. So I love the idea of things that are all the same shape making a bigger thing. So, and a blanket made out of sock yarn is perfectly feasible in West Texas to use year round. I'm always underneath a throw, no matter what time of year it is. At the end of the night, when I'm hanging out with my husband knitting, um, I'm always under a blanket. And so just depending on the time of the year, if I'm under the blanket in shorts or under the blanket in sweatpants, so always under a blanket. Um, so yeah. Um, and I, I think that's pretty close to everything that's to be talked about on the podcast. The only other thing is, while this is uploading, after I edit it and start uploading, I think I'm going to hop on Ravelry and make a group so that I can have an introduction thread, introductions thread, and have an ask me anything thread. Just be careful because... I'm a crazy girl. I'll answer all kinds of questions. Insane. Maybe I'll take y'all for a video tour of the Vespa, which she's getting new tires next week. It's another reason I didn't do a whole lot of anything this week is I shelled out a bunch of money for flat wall tires for my girl. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to make a group on Ravelry. Friday Night Knits podcast and then, so, yeah, find me on there. We're going to, uh, no, I don't see any cows or swaps or anything unless it ridiculously blows up, which I don't expect it will. And, yeah, just a small little group. Let's get this, why not, let's be official official. So, I am, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking me out if this is your first time again. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry that there wasn't a whole lot of knitting content. I promise there will be more next time. Um, if uh, this is your second time watching me, you watched episode one and now you're on to episode two. Yay! Thank you so much. Again, more knitting content next time. I keep hearing Fred Savage in my head saying, is this a kissing book? Is this a knitting podcast? So, um, yeah. Uh, if you liked it, like it on YouTube, subscribe at 33 subscribers, and uh, share it with your friends. Look me up on Instagram, on Ravelry, and have a great day. Go get your spits and put some string on them. We'll loops do other loops. <laughs>